They bade me come up here by the stair. I don't know, I never was in this place at all. I don't know am I right. Which now of the two of ye is Mike McInerney? Who's that calling me by me name? Sure am not I your sister. Honor McInerney that was, that is now Honor Donahue. Ah, oh, so you are to be sure. I didn't know you till you drew a near me. It's time you to come see me, and I in this place five year or more. Think of me to be no credit to you, I suppose, among all that tribe of the Donahues. It's a wonder they to give you leave to come ask, is it living I am yet, or dead? Should I bury the whole string of them? Himself was the last to go, my poor John Donahue. A nice, plain man, you couldn't but be fond of him. Very severe on the tobacco he was, but he wouldn't touch the drink. And is it in Cordon Row you're living yet? It is so. He left all to myself, but it's a lonesome thing the head of a house to have died. I hope now he left you a nice way of living. He did. A wide, lovely house I have. A few acres of grassland. The grass does be very sweet that grows among the stones. And as to the sea, there is something from it every day of the year. A handful of periwinkle to make kitchen, or maybe cockles. There is many a thing in the sea is not decent, but cockles is fit to put before a lord. Ho, oh, 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 ho, cockles, periwinkles. <laughs> yeah, you have all that, and you without e'er a man in the house. It is what I was thinking. Yourself might come and keep me company. It's no credit to me, a brother of me own, to be in this place at all. I, I'll go with you and welcome. Let me up out of this. It's the name of the McInerneys will be rising on every side. I don't know. I was ignorant of you being kept to the bed. Ah, I, I'm not kept to it, but maybe a nod time, when a colic rises up within me. Me stomach always gets better when there's a change in the moon. I, I'd like well to draw near you. Me heavy blessing on your honour, Donahue, for the hand you've held out to me this day. Sure, you, you could be keeping the fire in, or stirring the pot with a bit of Indian meal for the hens, and milking the goat, and taking the tacklings off the donkey at the door, or maybe putting out the cabbage plants in their time. For when the old man died, the garden died. We could, to be sure, and be cutting up the potatoes for seed. What luck now could there be in a house, and no man to be in it? Is is that a suit of clothes you brought with you? It is so, the way you will be tasty, coming in among the neighbours at Curtain Row. Ah, me joy you are. That now is a good frieze coat, and a hat. A hat in the fashion. Uh, and is it, is it going out of this you are, Mike McInerney? Don't you hear I'm going? To Curtain Row I'm going. Going I am to a place where I live every good thing. And, and is it to leave me here after you, you will? Every good thing. The goat and the kid are there, the sheep and the lamb are there. The cow does be running and she coming to be meat. Ploughing and seed sown and blossom at Christmas time and the cuckoo speaking through the dark days of the year. Age will go from me and I'll be young again. Geese and turkeys for the hundred and, and drink for the whole world. Ah, Mike, is it truth you were saying? You to go from me and leave me here with rude people and with townspeople and with people from every parish in the Union and they have a no wish for me or no respect for me at all. I wish now and I'll, 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 I'll leave you me pipe and I'll engage it's Honor Donna who won't refuse to send you in a few ounces of tobacco and nod to him and the neighbours coming into the fair in November and in the month of May. Ah, uh, what signifies tobacco? All I'm craving is the talk. There to be no one at all to say out to whatever thought will be rising in my innate mind. To be lying here with no conversable person in it, uh, it would be the abomination of misery. Look now, Honor, it's what I often heard tell Two to be better than one. Sure, if you had an old trouser or a skirt, maybe, that was full of holes, wouldn't you put another in under it that might be as tattered as itself, and the two of them together, it'd make some sort of a decent show? Ah, oh, what are you saying? There's no holes in that suit I brought you now, but as sound it is as the day I spun it for himself. It's what I'm thinking. I do be weak in nod time. Any weight I carry, it, it preys on me side. And, and this man does be weak in night time with swellings in his knees. But the two of us together, it isn't likely it is at the one time we would both fail you. 
bring the both of us now, and the height of the castle of luck to you, and the two of us together, it'll make one good hardy man. I'd like me job. Is it queer in the head you were grown asking me to take off a stranger off the road? I am not, ma'am, but you know neighbour I am. If I had forecasted this asking, I, I would have asked it myself. Michael Miskill I am, that was in the next house to you in Skiana. For pity's sake, Michael Miskill is it? Should that's worse again. Yourself and Mike that never left fighting and scolding and attacking one another, sparring at one another like two young pups you were, and threatening one another after like two grown dogs. I ah, know, no, all the quarrelling there was ever in it, it was meself did it. His anger rises fast and goes away like the wind. But bring him out with meself now, Honor Donahue, and God bless you. Well then I will not bring him out, and I will not bring yourself out and you not to learn better sense. Are you making ready to come? Ah, it's a mean thing, I'm thinking, for a man that's shivering into seventy years to go changing from place to place. Well, take your luck or leave it. All I asked was to save you from the hurt and the harm of the year. Bring the both of us now, or I'll not stir out of this. Give me back me fine suit, so. Well, Until I'll go look for a man of me own. I will go, as you're so unneighbourly and so disobliging, and look for some man of your own. May God help him, for he won't go with you at all. And here, there's your old hat. Too much time I lost with you. Let the two of you stop together, and the back of me hand here. Maybe... Maybe her house is not so wide as what she says. Why wouldn't it be wide? Ah, there, there does be a good deal of Midland poor houses down by the sea. Well, what do you know about wide houses? Whatever sort of a house you had yourself, it was too wide for the provision you had into it. Well, whatever provision I had in my house, it was wholesome provision and natural provision. Herself and her periwinkles. <laughs> oh, periwinkles is a hungry sort of food. Now, stop your impudence in your chat, or it'll be worse for you. I'd put up with my own father and mother as long as anyone would, but if they vexed me, I'd give them the length of a rope as soon as another. I would never ask a child to go eating periwinkles. Have you anyone to fight me? I have not, only the large. Well, stop putting insults on me so, and death picking at you. Sure, I'm saying nothing at all to displease you. It's just how I wouldn't go eating periwinkles. I'm in dread I might swallow the pin. <laughs> and who in the wide world is asking you to go eat them? They're as tricky as a fish in the full tide. Tricky, is it? Oh, my cuss. And the cuss of the four and twenty men on you. That the wood of me chew you from skin to marabone. I laid me debt on you, scheming vagabond, you. Be heavens, I'll pull out your pin, fella. Well, you're tired, you, you big bully. You, you, you dirty, starboard, and rough, you, you take... Oh! Ah, mother superior! Mother superior is murdered me! Oh, you bloody Look at you! Then let Mike McInerney end his days with his raging and his fighting. Never another word will he hear from the widow Donahue. A fool of a man to scorn a fine home like hers. No more sense, uh, nor even as much sense as the donkey itself. Would anyone believe that a man would sooner sit cramped in his workhouse bed, fighting with an even bigger fool than himself, when he could live in peace in a fine rich house? She'd find a decent man that had more sense, so she would.